dysfunctional vet with the RPS solar well pump user manual. This is the book that comes with your well kit. Whatever you do, don't lose it. In my hand, well in my hand, on the table here I have the RPS solar control box. Let's go over the features. You have a three position switch. You can run it strictly on the solar array. You can put it into the off position which turns the controller and pump off. Or you can put it into the battery position where it will run on battery. If you're doing that, be aware of the fact that the panels may produce more power than is needed for the pump and that will be channeled into the batteries. Read your manual to make sure you understand what's going on and that you have everything set properly. You have two wires, positive and negative, that go to your solar array, 24 volt. These two ports here, one is for the battery, your 12 volt battery coming in. The other one is for the lead that goes down hole to the pump. They recommend a number 12 gauge, I believe, use braided wire. And then these are your two gland fittings for your uh, high level tank and your low level water, which will be down hole where you're pumping the water out. So let's look at the inside of it and let me show you the setup on that. As we open the box, you have a light for power, you have a light to tell you when the pump is on, you have a light which is maximum power point tracking MPPT, you have an error light and the work arounds are in the book, you have low power, tank full, and tank low lights. So let's say for some reason you have a tank and you can hear the water coming into it and all of a sudden it, you don't anymore. You might check and see if the tank is low, which is going to be one of those sensors down here on the bottom that I told you about where the wire comes in, or if there's an error and then you can work through the troubleshooting chart. When you open the box, you'll find that there's a connection here. There is a connection which turns these lights on. It's got a little ribbon. This is well written out as to what everything is. These are your tank high and low. This is for your pump and this is for your battery coming in. And you can see these cables here are wired up already for positive and negative. And then of course here's your switch that runs over to the motherboard. This is surface mount technology, which means pretty much it's not user serviceable. If it goes bad, send it back, have it repaired. In the meanwhile, get a replacement board and get that one back to you so you have a spare in the off event. I plan to, this is a big hunker heavy metal box, which I will ground. I'm also going to put this inside a Faraday cage, which will, without going into a lot of detail, it's going to have a cooling fan on it to uh, blow against this thing to help keep it cool because it does get hot in the summer. What you need to know about these controls right here, this is the speed of your pump. The pump is a variable frequency, variable phase motor. It's a very complicated piece of equipment to put it bluntly. You can control this to whatever setting you need to set your gallons per minute. It doesn't matter what the sunlight and the power coming into it. This control, which is sort of like a rheostat, is going to control the phase and the frequency through this electronics to make that pump pump at the optimum setting that you have. Now you have what's called a delay right here. What this delay does is if you get a low water sensor you can figure out how long it takes for your, if you know how many gallons are coming in, and that's going to be in another video. If you know what your GPM refill is, you can set this to turn off until you reach the maximum head that your hydrostatic column in the well is going to have. And when you've reached that time, then this will kick back on and it will start pumping again until it reaches a low level and then it will shut off again and this kicks in. You should try to set your pump slightly below 
your recharge rate into your bore or into your casing. The reason for that is you get a continuous output and you can sort of guarantee how many gallons you're going to be getting per hour. That concludes this setup on the RPS solar module itself. The next section will be on the pump. The one thing to keep in mind, and this is important, wires 1, 2, and 3 have to be correct down hole for this thing to work. So if you're adding a 3 wire 12 gauge line onto this, make sure that you note what those colors are and use the appropriate tags that they give you so that they're labeled properly or else the pump will not work. So that's real important. That's probably the most critical aspect to this and we'll go into pump setup in just a moment. Dysfunctional vet out.